Hey guys, welcome to Wednesdays with Springfield Leather. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's been wanting to learn how to wet mold, and yeah. there's not much to learn about it. It's it's self-explanatory, but yeah. but uh, we're, we're going to show you some stuff. Yeah. What do we got here, Denny? Well, we're going to we're going Tony brought his bear skin and knife in here, so we're going to try and uh, mold around it. We've got a little little sheath that. Uh, already been stitched together. Just a tiny little pouch. Yeah, but uh, before we start, uh, let's talk about the leather you're, you're going to use and, okay. and how to wet it and stuff. Okay. For me, a lighter weight leather is definitely going to be easier to mm -hmm. shape and to mold. Heavier weight leather will mold just as well. It just takes a little more effort, but I've got some fairly lightweight. It's probably five to six or maybe six to seven ounce leather at the heaviest here. But uh, I also like uh, leather that's a little bit on the flanky side. Sure. If, if you're gonna if you're gonna mold something that's got a lot of really sharp, steep curves to it, because uh, that flanky leather means it's a little bit stretchy. It stretches yeah. and and it shrinks too. You can shrink yeah. it as well as stretch it. So uh, I, I like to keep that in mind. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't use a firm piece of leather to mold something. It's just going to be more difficult for you to do it to sure. get the job done. And I know sometimes, like with my knife sheaths, in order to, to get that leather to have an almost kydex-like feel, I want that firmer leather. So it really depends on your application yeah. Um, yeah. that you're going for. <clears throat> but another thing, when you wet a piece of leather and form it and, and shape it, it's going to stiffen up on its own. Yes. It, it will gain yeah. a lot of body just from uh, drying out from the, from the water treatment that you give it. As far as the wetting agent, it's just water, just plain water. That's all well, that's we pretty use. pretty simple. Uh, Warm water will work better. It, the the leather will soak the water up a little bit faster. But to cold water, it works good. Don't use hot water. We aren't trying to cook leather. We're just, <laughs> just going to mold it. <laughs> but anyway, I've just got a bucket of plain clear water back here. He just took that sheath and he just, just put it right in there. Yeah. A lot of people say, you know, let it soak till the bubbles start coming up or stop coming up and everything. But that's, you know, that's beside the point right <laughs> here. But anyway, I've got this piece of leather wet. Let me get it right here on the spot I'm supposed to be. Now I'm just going to shove the knife in it. Like this. And you can actually kind of shape around it. You can use a... A rub stick. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch here. We've got all sorts of little modeling bone folder type things. Yeah, bone folders are what most people use. This is one we sell here in the store. A piece of deer antler, if it's nice and smooth, works well. Yeah. You know, this is made out of a piece of uh, maple flooring. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what that's made out of. <laughs> yeah, this is a piece of uh, rosewood or ironwood, I think. But uh, it doesn't matter, you know, just any kind of a smooth stick. But if you'll see here, I'm, I'm rubbing against the edges of this. And if you can see here, let me see if I can shape it to see how nice a shape that took. And that's just with water. Yep. And just wet leather. Dipped it in some water. Uh, the backside, I don't, I generally like to keep the backside of something flat, you know, because if you've got it in your pocket or on your belt, you don't want a lot of shapes against yourself. But, so you're just uh, molding the one side. Yeah, I just like to mold the one side. Sometimes you can't avoid uh, molding both sides, but uh, one side is all I'm trying to do here. But anyway, we've got that. Well, didn't uh, that seem pretty easy? It was easy. Uh, another thing people ask, how long you leave, you need to leave it in? Uh, you can leave it in till it dries. If, you, if you're using a piece of uh, actual steel, and not stainless steel, but a piece of steel, you need to coat it with WD-40 or a plastic bag yeah. or something like that to keep it from rusting. Uh, but this is stainless steel, so I would just leave this in overnight if you mm -hmm. want to or you can pull it out in five minutes if you want to yeah you know if you leave it in overnight the when the leather's wet it kind of swells yeah so so your sheath is a bit smaller than it will be when it dries if you leave this in it will dry around that and actually loosen up a bit yeah if you take it out when it dries it'll probably be about exactly like it is now yeah and sometimes even what I'll do is I'll let it sit for, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes with the, the knife or 
gun or whatever it is in there and then I'll take it out and I'll kind of push it down a little bit to get a little extra tight mold a on it. A little retention, yep. yeah. Yep, a little more retention. Yeah. And then I'll but, let it dry like that. But this, I, I took this out and uh, it Still retained its shape pretty well. Yep. You know, you've got to be careful when the leather is wet, if you change the shape and let it dry that way, that's the way it's going to stay. Yeah. Just, just keep that in mind on all these things that we're doing. But let's put that little dude aside. What are we going to do what next? What did we do next? Let's let's mold around a pair of scissors okay. just just to just to do it. Yeah, this is without any kind of a shape or anything. I'm just going to let's cut this piece of leather off right here. Well, those scissors, scissors are multi-purpose. Multi-purpose. Yeah, we're going to mold around them and use them to cut with. Once again, we're just sticking this piece. Oh, okay. of... you moved your bottom in the way. There's bucketing within. Oh. Oh. Oh, look, there's yeah, and there's toes. the dog drinking out of the bucket. <laughs> it, it's good water, you can tell. <laughs> but anyway, I got this plenty wet. The water's still standing on top, and you don't necessarily need to do that. You don't need it saturated so much that leather just or water just sits there. But I'll just put this on top and just kind of start working around it. When you aren't using it. Uh, an actual mold to do this with when you go around the end of something like the real sharp corner that's going to be the hardest part that you have to do but this piece of leather worked pretty well there take our little molding tool go around it here like this yeah leathers Leather, especially vegetable tan, is is a really versatile product. And um, not only, obviously, like the tooling to the top side, but just once you get it wet, it almost becomes clay-like. Exactly. And you can just do all sorts of things with it. That's what I tell people. You know, leather has a lot of the same properties that clay does, or, or vegetable tan leather does. Yeah. If you go to a... a that's another thing. People ask if they can, uh, if they can mold... Uh, chrome tan leather and I always say no not with any satisfaction you can't uh, because it's a finished leather it won't take uh, the water like you want it to yeah I mean you you can get it wet and you can do something but it's not gonna hold <laughs> yeah that's right because it's already finished you know yeah but anyway we molded around that pair of scissors and it took pretty well <clears throat> the wetter the leather is the less of a shape that you're going to get out of it so a lot of times if you would if I would let this dry a little for a little while I could make it to shape better and you but can I'm come back in and add all sorts of contours yeah. as well let's leave this like like it is right now and a little later after that's dried a little bit we can come back and maybe add a little more definition to it okay what do we want to do next? Well, we've got this little fancy holster made up right here. All right. Yeah, this is a pancake holster. I think this is a pattern that we sell here at the store. I think so, yeah. Uh, and it's a one-size-fits-all, <laughs> believe it or not. It, it is and it isn't. This one's already been, in, been stitched to shape over here. So uh, I really don't have much leeway that in that direction. But... I can still wet this leather and make it take any shape that I want to. So let's do this. And this is pretty heavy leather. Danny, why don't we wet it from this side? From this side? Yeah, because he's going to, unless you just want people okay. looking at your butt. <laughs> but this leather is a bit heavier, so I want to get a little more water in it. But it took water pretty well. One spot there that something got on, but not taking any, but that's all right. So we have people wet forming holsters and tool pouches, sheaths, pockets, Zippo lighters. Then we had a question about any specific wood choice when making a mold. No, oh. no. Here's a mold that I made <laughs> out, of, out of a piece of polyboard. He's a used polyboard. Used, but you well used polyboard. <laughs> yes. Let's turn it over. That's pretty exciting. Okay. <laughs> it's left used. <laughs> left used, yeah. And then the no, suggestion it, of using poly wrap or cling wrap or whatever to wrap around metal so it doesn't... Yeah, we just brought in some plastic bags. You can use Ziploc bags. Um, at home, I'll use just saran wrap, and I'll saran wrap the knives. Um, sometimes I put a little bit of oil on the knife. you got to be careful if, if you decide to do that. Uh, but then you just wrap it up real good so that... 
I always worry, especially with knives, that the end is just going to stab right through the saran wrap or right. the plastic. And so I try to kind of extra wrap that before I put it in. Yeah. Um, especially sure. if you've got a tight, snug fit. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other kind of question that we had is kind of what we're getting ready to do with the holster. Michael Seeger's had problems. Molding around objects and using nails and tacks to keep it in shape is where he's having problems. He's been using seven to eight permanent oak veg tan to mold over handguns. He might have the leather a little bit too wet. That's just the problem I was talking about with the scissors here. That leather was really saturated and it won't hold its shape until it starts to dry a little bit. Mm. Uh, so that might be his problem. Uh, another thing is just keep worrying it until it does what you want it to. I, yeah. I mean, you can't, it's not going to do it on its own. You're making it, trying to make it do something that it doesn't want to do. So you've got to help it. Could you put it in, a, if you had a vacuum sealer, could you put it in a vacuum uh, sealer and seal yeah. it up? I, you know, that's something that I've never done. I know almost all holster makers uh, have, have resorted to that, and I think it works pretty well for them. But, yeah. But I'm, I'm showing you here today how to do it without any special equipment like that. Yeah. You know, this is just... Yeah, if you really start making a lot, then it's something to invest in for sure. Let's start with that little one, little and I'll show. We've got two. Are we going to remold this? Yeah, we're going to. We're going to. I'm going to show you that this this holster is actually too big for this pistol. I would say because, so. <laughs> because this pistol needs to set about like that, with with the trigger guard just barely out of the top of the holster, and it's way too long. Width wise, it's pretty good, but I'm what I'm doing here is showing you that to. Uh, this gun and that big gun, that's a 1911 size gun, will both fit in this same holster. You know, if I was going to use this leather for this gun, I, all I would do is cut the end of it off, make it shorter. Sure, you can modify the pattern, yeah. Yeah, but uh, all right, let's wrap this gun a little bit. So while you're wrapping that up, we had a couple quick questions. Keith was asking, just tuned in, how long do we case it before wet molding? We literally dumped it in the bucket two or three yeah. times. The just thicker the leather, the more that you will have to wet it. Yeah, get the leather wet till it relaxes. That's the main yeah. thing. Just let the, when the leather relaxes where you can bend it and it'll stay bent, you're dive in pretty before, good shape. Die before or after? Uh, I would die after if I could. There'll be some times when you can't. There'll be th places you can't get to after you've molded it, you yeah. know, uh, so you'd have to do your dye work before. But uh, I always like to dye afterwards. That way, uh, you know, nothing Im impedes the molding process. Right. The water the water goes right through the lip. That was everybody else's thoughts online, too, so. Good awesome. Answer. All right. <laughs> it's a consensus. <laughs> All right. Now, I've got this gun wrapped up a little bit. Let's just shove it in here. Pancake holster like this, when you stitch it up, it's, it's going to be a pretty tight fit. That's what you want, though. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. And <clears throat> I don't know if you can all see the gun, but uh, the handle sticking out here, the, the trigger guards here, that's about how I would want it, I think, if, if I was making it for myself. Only I would make it left-handed instead of right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no difference. But here, I'm just using my fingers to shape this. But you see how easy that, that is to make it take the shape. I'm gonna even gonna shape it around the end of the barrel here so you can see how short this gun is compared to the leather. Now, let's take a big stick here. And we can make this take a little bit of definition around the, all the gun parts. Nick said he was using lighter dye, so he normally does, does his dyeing before. But we have people tuning in from all over. We have Scotland, all over the United States, Canada. Nice. Welcome aboard, guys. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, you know, you hear the word wet molding, and people think it's, it's a real involved process. But as you can see, there's not much to it. It just... It just uh, getting the leather wet and, and uh, making it take a shape around whatever it is you're trying to do. Really, you just got to be patient with it. That's cause, right. Because you just have to let it dry before you move on. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> now, right now, I would, if I wasn't going to mold this other gun in the same holster, I would work on this a little bit and make it take a little more shape. 
Yeah. But I'm going to try and put that big gun in here and see if it's going to work. It might not. The gun might be too big. But I'm going to pull that out. Are we going to re-wet that a little bit? Yeah, I'm going to wet that up a little more. Yeah. As you can see, there's starting to be light spots here. And, and that means the leather isn't wet all the way through in those light spots. Mm. I'm just going to get, oh sorry, I did it from the wrong side again. <laughs> we'll just check out Lynn and looking in the water. <laughs> but anyway, this is just a plastic gun. It's an airsoft gun, but it's, a, it's the same size as, as a Beretta 9mm uh, uh, 1911. So uh, I've, I've made holsters with this gun before. This is the gun that Clayton walks around and, and shoots people with in the shop when they're not and they're not working hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lot. <laughs> Clayton's becoming quite the marksman. <laughs> Romania tuned in. Wow. A new country. We should hang up a map somewhere. Like to have a retail. Marking. Yeah, so we can country. mark our country. That would be awesome. We should do that. We'll get Stacy right on that. <laughs> And then Poland, right after that, Romania and Poland popped back in. I think we had some Poland last week. Yeah, maybe the maybe same, same one here. We had a question here. At what point would you tool the leather? How would you deal with the shape created when tooling? You're, you're probably going to want to do that first. Yes, you want to tool it first. And when you tool the leather, <clears throat> you've got to be very careful when you're trying to wet mold it. And you aren't going to be able to make it take as near as much definition over the tooling or you're going to swell all your tooling back out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you really need to take into account the tooling before, like, whatever your project is. Um, you know, tool around the sides and the edges, maybe do some tooling around the top, but just know that you're going to be stretching that leather out um, and you'll be losing a lot of the, the definition in the tooling um, wherever it has to be heavily molded. Yeah. So. But <clears throat> the idea with the definition that you take is not only the retention that it creates, but it's just the look of it. When you've got a lot of tooling on it, you don't want to detract a lot. From, from the look of your right. tooling, you know. All you want to do is, is create a little bit of retention. And I, I think this know. is what we call a finger fight. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think this gun is going to fit in there because <laughs> of the way this is stitched. But if, if I was doing this, I would make this stitch pattern a lot different. I would lay my gun on the pattern when it was flat as you can see here right here is where it's where it's yeah, it needs expecting to be much farther down yeah if, if i come around here with the stitching i could even come back like this but that's beside the point you can <clears throat> this would have worked if it would have been <laughs> stitched a little bit different well where's the gun that goes in there i don't know <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of wood, but I don't know. I think <laughs> I think Clayton wore it out probably. <laughs> so we've had a, a few suggestions of us tearing the wood up. I know we've looked into it from time to time. It's there's a lot of people out there that do, and guys, there's just so many varieties. Um, you know, bluegun.com. I think you can buy them. Um, there's a lot of little vendors that you can buy them from. It's just support those people if yeah support them but the main thing is unless you were <clears throat> unless i was going to do 50 or 100 of yeah. these pistol holsters like this i wouldn't use a blue gun i would use the gun itself yeah you know uh, for you at home that are doing a holster for yourself why spend 50 dollars to buy a blue gun exactly but if, you, already, I mean, if you go into production, that's definitely something that's that's yeah. useful. Then you don't have to get your clients, you know, firearms and things like that. But if you're just making them for, for friends and yourself, you might as well just use, yeah. your, use your Archie. Gun. Archie says he loves your hair, Liz. Thanks, Archie. And then Michael has a question. Is there a way to remove the black spots to get in the holes in the leather once I remove the nails? So yes. I assume that it, Oxalic acid. Yeah. Uh, that that's yeah, just just a metal spot is all that is, and yeah. the oxalic acid will remove it. You mix a what is it, an ounce or a half? Yeah, ounce I think we sell a little ounce. Yeah, baggie. It in a sixteen ounce bottle or a pop bottle. Yeah, he always that's has a Dr Pepper bottle. Yeah. on his thing. It's like don't drink this. Yeah, <laughs> it'll make you go <laughs> blind and then. climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you <could> possibly jump <laughs> out of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> since you're blind, yeah. don't yeah. know how to get out of the tree. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, it, but don't do that till the very final thing. Because it after, prevents you from tooling well. Yes, after yeah. you've done all your tooling and everything else and all your shaping and everything, then you can clean it with the oxalic acid. Do you do the oxalic before you start dying? Yes. Okay. Yes, so that will clean your leather. A lot of people use the oxalic acid whether they have those blue or black spots or not. You know, it just kind of cleans the leather. They call it leather bleach. Yeah. 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 Uh, another quick question: When when you are tooling be beforehand, since you are maybe going to stretch it a little bit, are you making your impressions deeper in your tooling? Not necessarily. I would tool it just like I would tool anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I would. You know, the heavier the leather, the deeper your, your cuts are going to be, the yeah. deeper your tooling is going to be, so. Give somebody a, a hint on the uh, using the air airsoft replicas instead of even getting blue guns. So they can pull them out and you shoot your kids with them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hit them in the eye. It will it will leave a mark. Everybody's walking around the house with safety glasses on. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Okay. Uh, I've got a cell phone case here that I made that's molded. Uh, oh, it's well used. Well used, yes. And I have, uh, here's my nice uh, poly board that I cut a mold out of. Did he just, just real fast, did, did this leather start out natural? Yes, started out just this color. So, so look at this, how long have you been wearing this? Oh, six months. Six months. Look at that patina, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I love natural veg. Yeah, look at that. I can't. This is too Turns awkward. Out, yeah, and that just, <laughs> no, that just needs foot oil finishes. All that's on Yeah. That. Look wow. at that. The back is a little bit lighter, obviously, because that doesn't get any light or as much touching from your hands. But, man. I like all the extra little scratches and scar marks on it just adding character. Yeah. Anyways. All the airsoft tournaments. I was going to make a new one, but I think I'll just keep using this. Yeah. One. <laughs> you, you put so much time and effort into coloring that thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, when you do this, I just uh, I just put my phone down on this block and drew around it and went to a, a bandsaw, or you can use a, a scroll saw or whatever and cut this out. You need to leave a little bit of room on each side of your... Uh, of your mold for the leather it depends on the thickness if you're going to do something really thick you need to leave a little more room but sure what i've got here is about right there's about an eighth of an inch on each side <clears throat> when i'm cutting a piece of leather that's big enough for this i've got to account for the fact that it's going to come up this way and then out out here enough to, to make a stitch line so i've got probably an inch and a half or so on each side and now i will have it at, at least an inch and a half at the end so, the main thing is make it big enough. Don't sure. don't short yourself. This way. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm going to wet this leather. Uh, I moved the camera, so. You okay. did, did on the right yeah. side, and I switched the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mold down here. So, put, uh, oh, go ahead. Put my leather on it upside down, of course. Then I'm just going to kind of try and make it start to take a shape here. And this, I kind of rounded the corners off with the sandpaper on this, but it's not really that important because the leather is going to take its own shape anyway. But after I put that block in there, then I'll just shape this down as well as I can. And like I said before, if your leather is too wet, it won't want to shape very well immediately. But when you're going around a tight corner like this and, and making that, that curve, you need to have it pretty wet or you won't get that, that turn made. But I'm just going to... We're, we're doing this quick. I would take a lot more time and, and let things dry if I wasn't trying to show you guys what to do. So just realize I'm not showing you right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take it. you can take your time. We're here for questions as well. Okay, now let's turn this over. Hey, look at that. Yeah, and see the shape that I've got? <laughs> if I was going to take this out, which I just did, now I would take my stick. Oh, we're going to work it from the front side. Go around this stick. Since I already made it to take that curve and that shape, and that's another reason, if this wasn't fairly flanky, I couldn't make this little tight curve here. Yeah. 
So Sean says he is prepping to wet mold the interior pocket and limb retainers for a takedown recurve bow case. Oh my. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then Betty says, do we have these molds for sale? I mean, I guess if you bought a poly board and cut, a, <laughs> cut your own mold out, then I guess we do. But this is just yeah. something you made yeah, about Yeah, this is, this is yeah. all homemade stuff that we're showing you here. You yeah. can do this at home. If if all of you have is a, a handsaw, you know, and a file, you can make you a can mold this. like this. It takes a little bit longer and it's a little more work, but... To, well, and the thing is, like, you know, Denny has his phone case on his, but if he had an otter case or if he had some other fancy case, every phone size is different. Every, whatever you're doing, a lot of times there's just so many variations that, you know, this is just the starting point. So get yourself your used piece of poly that's all cut up and you're not going to yeah. want to use it anymore. And start making your own molds. Yeah, and that's another thing. This poly board wouldn't be thick enough for this phone actually because my my phone is actually a bit thicker than yeah. this so i would number one i would either use a, a thicker piece of whatever material it was or if i use this one glue leather water. leather is our medium <laughs> so i would glue a piece of leather on top of it however much it took to match this up you guys you know? we sell those split bundles for a reason there's no <laughs> <laughs> there's no need to to pay full price for some full grain leather if you, you can just layer some splits hey have, it's kevin there's guns Oh yeah, well, we could shoot you with people, the big one. People were coming in here giving us what, problems. What are you doing? Kevin, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, we were doing a little bit of holster uh, molding, video molding. thing, right? Yeah, it's your like video yeah. thing. Uh, there and, I ain't gonna be. Yeah. Well, I just I just saw the sign that says you were live and there was a microphone thing and i'm thinking you guys didn't say nothing to me you didn't ask we didn't ask you're right I, i'm i'm somewhat stricken <laughs> oh, well, I, am, I am mentally scarred perhaps okay we're sorry poor we? guy we're, we're, we're very out. sorry can we apologize in any way yeah and please make do this go right? ahead do it in front of all these people but, uh, hey, Kevin, i think you so, have a, a molded phone case don't you yeah kind of but mine's a little pathetic so, well, like, so was mine. <laughs> there's, there's mine. That's pretty nice. Well, it works. That's a honker. Yeah. It is a honker, and it, it holds my phone really good, though. Yeah. But I, that's what you're, you're, so you're molding leather? Yeah. Man, I could have saved you guys a lot of hassle. Yeah. What would you have You done? know how to mold leather? I'll tell you what. You're going to really be glad I came in here, because I'm going to save a lot of time and trouble for everybody. Well, it's really easy. You, you... Get your vegetable leather wet, really good and wet. You can dip it in a sink, you can run it under a, a hose, you can get it wet. Then you squish it all around until you get the shape that you want and you let it dry. I thought you were going to put it in a plastic bag in the closet for a month and look at it again and it would have mold on it. <laughs> that would have been, a, Why would that would have been good. That? <laughs> anyway, uh... Oh boy, I need. To, I, I think I need to go. <laughs> you guys have got this under control. That, that, that looks yep. dangerous. Yeah, it, it shoots plastic BBs. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm leaving. Bye. Thank Thanks Kevin. for helping. Bye, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the dog out. But anyway, that's all there is to molding that. Now, if I was going to actually make a phone case, I would have this piece of leather. After this dried, and it would have that's another thing, it would have to be bone dry before I did this. I would uh, make myself a stitch line around the outside and uh, and and mark the outside of it and cut it and then set it on this piece of leather, stitch it on there, and then I could cut it all to shape. Yeah, yeah, but but this has to be dry before you start cutting on it because you will change the shape of it and wasted your time. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Denny, so your phone case had a little hole cut out of it to push it up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. When would you cut that in? After it was dry. Okay. After it was dry. Because, see, I can I can mash this out flat right now. Yeah, I see but that. When, but, and it stands right back up. Yeah. That's magic. Because it's dry and it was shaped when it was <laughs> wet. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, like I said, uh, it's not a big mystery. Everybody just thinks so because they hear that word molding, wet molding, you know. I had somebody the other day on the phone, and if you're listening, hello, um, that was telling me that whenever he does his water mixture, he puts a little bit of Dawn dish soap in it. 
You can do that. I, uh, I've heard people doing that when they're tooling, cutting with their swivel knife mm -hmm. instead of just plain water, use a little bit of dish yeah. soap like that. But I'd never heard of it as far as wet molding. That might might do something really good. I don't know. There's a million suggestions out there. Sure. So. And everybody says, can you wet mold a finished leather? And the answer is probably not. Uh, there are some kinds of finished leather. This this is a bridal leather. It's vegetable tanned, and we've split it down to a fairly thin piece. Uh, let's see if it will mold. Yeah. I can't tell you for sure. But to, we'll just make a bunch of cell phone yeah. cases. Yeah, we'll make another cell phone case. Let me just get this. For the bear, belly area on a side of leather, would be a better portion to use for yeah, well, doing a phone Yeah, you case? don't want to get down into the real wrinkled up part. Like in the armpits of a, of a hide, yeah. you know, that's always real rinky and, and nasty. But in the, when you bend the leather, you can see here, see these, these creases and cracks that we've got? I don't know if you can go to a close-up of this. Can you see it on that one? No, but anyway, you can bend it, it creases, the, the, the fibers aren't real close there. So you want it, want it where the fibers are pretty loose, where when you bend it, you can see wrinkles and stuff in it. That's the best kind for me. Okay. Okay. Which side do I need to wet this on? Oh, you, you I, you either want. side. I All right. So this is still a vegetable tan piece of leather. This is some permito uh, bridle. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And it did take some water. Yeah, it did. But mm -hmm. you can you can see on the top. Where it, it didn't just saturate it, there are there are spots here where there's no water, but it wet from underneath. So. And we did also split off the finished back. So if you had just bridle in its natural state, it's going to have a finished pasted back on it. Yeah. Paste. Um, and that will prevent some of the water. But you'll have to soak it longer so it can come in through the sides. Yeah. But let's take this same mold here. We've also had a couple questions about. Watch it around that leatherman. See if it'll go around that leatherman. Well, let's try this first right. and see what happens. <laughs> and then we'll do the leather. Uh, the bone folders and the other molds that we've kind of talked about, these molds that you are, have here, we're just kind of making up as we go along and using what we're forming around as the mold. Mm -hmm. But we have a few creasers and bone folders, but could you make your own? Yeah, these are all. This is homemade, this is homemade, this that's homemade. homemade. This is the only this one we sell. Store-bought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one, like, like Denny said, anything that's nice and smooth, anything that has a nice smooth, you don't want anything that has like hard points on it. Um, he said antlers that are nice and smooth, like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, like these, I'll use these if I ever like scratch them against something like this and make a scar in them, I'll sand them back down sure. and make them smooth again. Because anything that, that has a scar or a, it's gonna an imperfection, you're, that's gonna transfer to your leather when you, when you uh, rub it. But I think this is probably going to mold a little bit. Donald is getting ready to wet mold a uh, labradorite. Labradorite? Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever that is. A stone? I have a labrador. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a stone, and he's going to make leather stone pendants. That would be kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I see a lot of those. They're, they're pretty neat. Yeah. Chad, is there, any, is there any chrome tan, upholstery, oil tan over there you got in your leather piles? Nothing. Well, this piece of leather kind of molded. It would it would make something like we're trying here. I want to think if we've got any oil tan scraps that we could we could cut a section off of that. Show that it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll go. I go. I'll find you some. Okay. Okay. Oh, you might have something behind your head too. Yeah. Yeah. That that that, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is veg tan. So yeah, I and make it has been split. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got to you've got to take everything into consideration when you do that. Here's a here's a piece of uh, buffalo. It's uh, like still mold. This one will give us trouble. I can feel it. So I think this is our stone crazy horse buffalo, and it has been split down. So it's a little, or maybe that's the denim. Yeah. That's and the it's, denim. That's it's the got denim. a lot of oil into in it. You can see that pull up that you get yeah. when. When you do that, that means it's real oily. And I think I could soak this for quite some time. I'm just going to leave it floating in the water. Yeah. 
but it's not going to take any water. Nope, that really didn't do much. We're just making a mess over here. Just making a mess. That's so I can put it down here and go through the same process. Wish it all day. And it's not going to do much. It's doing a really good job of resisting you. Uh, Liz Amber said he called and made an order yesterday, and she thinks she recognized the voice and said you're super nice. Well, thanks. Yeah, that was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> or Christy. Sometimes people think that Christy's me, so. Or from Poland. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. that, that's not going to mold. That didn't, that didn't do diddly yeah. nothing. <laughs> it's still a yeah. pretty flat piece of leather. So just... Yeah. Point taken, and, right? Yeah, and no. I could use this, but it's the same thing. It's, the it's thing. a it's an oil pan shot. leather. Play it right on that bowl and folder thing. Oh, sorry, let me switch it down. There you go. Yeah, it's still just it's just a flat piece of leather that you put an indention kind of in. You can see you can see where you fold it around, but it's still yeah, really pretty that, flat. Yeah. That's because it's a pull-up leather and that's where I put pressure right. around yeah. there and you can see the light spot in it, but there's no shape. Yeah. So chrome tan, oil tan, upholstery leathers, it's just not a it's not a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I would pronounce this guy's name but I'd do it wrong, but another one from Poland. Ooh. Can Perfect. wet form leather be carved? So after you've before Okay. Carve, carve before. Because otherwise you're just you, wetting it again and taking out all the molding. You could carve after it's been molded, like on this. I could, I could carve this if I if I put the mold back back in there. Okay. But <clears throat> the mold isn't really dense enough to to accept much carving. I could I could cut the design pretty well right on top. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do the edges. But to, I could cut the design, but when I went to bevel on it, the the mold itself would be too porous to take an impression very well. Gotcha. So, so you'd be a lot better off doing all your tooling beforehand. Okay. CM, once the leather is dried and taken its shape, is there any special treatment that would be applied to maintain the integrity and shape? Products like tan coat, so on and so forth. Needs foot oil. Needs to put... Vegetable oil is when it's tanned, all all of the oils and moisture is, is removed from the leather. It's actually dried, you know, with with uh, heat. I think they put it in a hot room and and dry it. And when it comes out, it's it's dry. It has no moisture in it at all. And the the leather itself is a series of fibers, you know, that that are going to work together like this. If they're dry, they will wear themselves out. So you need to lubricate them with something, which would be neat foot oil, vegetable oil. Oil, yeah, something like that, or or uh, you know, a ready-made product like Bic uh, conditioner, something right. like that. Any kind of a conditioner with with a little bit of oil or lanolin or something in it, uh, it needs that. And then you can go over it with a with a top coat, an acrylic top coat of some sort, if you want to. You know, it'll, that'll kind of water make it water resistant for a while. It won't. It's hard to make leather waterproof. Right. You know, but anyway, what are we gonna do next? Well, we've got a bowl here that Tony wants us to see if we can mold. Oh, okay, so let's take this piece of leather, get him wet, and get it. I'm gonna get this good and wet this time. So, Sean said he soaks his veg tan leather for about five minutes, and we talked about this until the bubbles quit coming out. Kind of depends on how thick it is, but then he uh cements the pigskin liner on before he wets mold in a wood frame that he built. Well, There's lots it, of different ways. If it works for him, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's all I can say. But anyway, I wet this leather and I'm stuffing it down in this bowl. <laughs> that's about this all. This is I can real do. technical, guys. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, the terminology is where it's all at. <laughs> Let's get that other bowl here and see if we can put it inside. So these are stackable. Yeah. Denny, I think you've been doing some hair on stuff. That bowl's a little I hairy. I have. <laughs> I have. All right, what I'm doing is trying to shove this leather bowl inside here. Uh oh. That camera got too hot. Uh oh. Our up top one gave up on us. It's kind of warm in here. Uh -oh. 
take this out because I've so got you can a couple do, of wrinkles on each end. Yeah, you can do this with anything. We we sell or we have sold like a little bowl mold kit that was basically an outside rim and an inside mold and you would shove the leather between the two and let it dry and then you could let the edges do whatever you wanted. Like you could trim it really close and just have um, just a really neat kind of like this but the other way, you know, just a molded bowl. Or you can do this crazy thing and have all these fun wrinkles coming off of your bowl and kind of this three-dimensional piece of art. Yeah. Um, when you've got something this deep, it's hard to do it. It's almost impossible to do it without some wrinkles in it. Yeah. I'm trying to get these wrinkles out. What if you did it over what if you did it over the other side of it? Did it on the outside and then put the other bowl over the top of it? Uh, let's try it, Tony. <laughs> I feel like it's the same thing. But maybe I, I guess you could maybe try to work out some of those with a yeah. a stick. Possibly. And if this bowl was a little bit stiffer, that would help too. Luna, what are you doing? But see, that's another reason. If this was, <clears throat> if this wasn't a fairly flanky leather, I wouldn't have a chance at doing this. <laughs> I don't have a chance anyway. <laughs> I have to try to see how hard I can make it on you. I think Luna's bored with our molding. Luna, why don't you do this? <laughs> make yourself useful. What I tell her all the time. I tell her to sweep my floors. She doesn't do a very good job of it. That may be good because we could cut that top off and off that leather and just have yeah. it about an inch deep. Yeah, there'll be a, there'll be a, a part of this that will be pretty smooth. But when I get down towards the top of the bowl, which is the bottom, the way it's sitting now, that's where your wrinkles aren't going to be able to. I feel like the example here is just you can mold about anything to anything with some vegetable tan leather and a, and a lot of water. Uh, Dan from Oregon was asking about our bowl kits. Are they still up? We should still have some. I know we, we bought a thousand of them in some weird purchase and we've had them for years and years and years but um i almost wonder if we're starting to get to the end but yeah that would be about yeah. the size of it yeah so just uh this is about the size that it makes just this little bowl and like i said you can continue how much ever i don't know fringe you want on the yeah. outside see how nice that looks look how beautiful that bowl is <laughs> look let's just, let's yeah, just kind of prep it up a yeah. little bit. And then once this is done, you could airbrush it and you could you could give it some wild pop yeah. and then somebody can put it on their coffee table and put yeah. their keys in it or yeah. some potpourri. Peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> put your <laughs> Whatever you want. Don't eat the peanuts on the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look, so this is this is done and molded and I'm sure it's been dry for probably several years now, but look how Look how rigid that is. Like you can stretch and mold it and move it, but it's not going anywhere. This yeah. is this is done. It's set. Just don't get it wet again. Yeah. And the only way that, that this would change shape is if like if you laid it down like this or something and, and had a, had a weight on it or something of some sort. Yeah. You know, it, it, that would change its shape. It would eventually relax it. I've always found it pretty amazing how how good vegetable tan holds yep. after it's been molded. Like it's pretty incredible that it started out as a flat piece of leather. So And you could probably put some like Michael saying sand in there to add to the ridges rigidness of it, but it would also soak soak some of the moisture still that's in the leather. You had a question, is there any difference between using using the wet form between Neat's foot oil and the Neat's foot oil compound or the Neat's foot compound? The Neat's foot oil compound has uh, a lot of petroleum distillates in it. And the Neat's Foot oil itself is is all animal. They, if you looked long ago, I don't know. I haven't looked in the dictionary recently, but uh, if you looked up Neat's Foot oil in the, in Webster's dictionary, it's it was made from hooves and shin bones of cows. Would there be a picture of you next to it using the yeah. using Neat's Foot oil? Me, well, <laughs> me scraping the shin bones, probably. <laughs> hey, Denny, how's how's our sheath coming for our scissors? Oh, little holder. Yeah. I'm just going to play with this for a while because he's got to do all the fun stuff so far. Here. Is it dry enough now to, uh, maybe. to do something? We'll see. I tell you what, guys, these bowls are really, they're pretty neat. And you can do a lot of, you know, depending on the 
shape of your piece of leather, you can make a lot of different designs and everything. And then, like I said, airbrushing on these bowls is actually um, pretty fun. Uh, will you grab that hat there, Liz? Yep. I had a question about our Polish guys have been talking to each other back and forth in Polish, and I don't know how to... Don't leave us out of your conversation, guys. But that that is not really a uh, wet form. It's a mm -mm. it's a pattern. This is an oil tan leather. Yeah. Um, and so it's just been the the crown has been sewn, and yeah. Then, yeah so. Yeah, and it's the Aussie hat pattern. So and Clayton did a video on that, uh, a, a live video we did on that a while a while back. So you should yeah. be able to find it. But I messed with the scissors. It's it's starting to take some shape. It's still pretty wet though. Yeah. I shouldn't have soaked it quite that long. That's, well, it's pretty easy because it's so thin. You stick it in, yeah. you know, once. That's and, what I should have done. Or just a yeah. quick dip. A quick but dip. that's something that you guys are going to have to experiment with when you ask how long it needs to soak. You know, it depends on how how porous your leather is you know if you a more dense part of the hide is going to take longer to soak up any water than than the flanky part and a thinner piece of hide is definitely going to soak it up sooner yep for sure what would be the worst mistake that we could make wet forming ruin it and have to start over uh <laughs> form the wrong I, shape there's really <clears throat> Cutting your cutting your piece too small, you know, it's, yeah. especially for something like this. Leather really only stretches so far. Yeah, if I had cut it where where this end was up here, you know, there wouldn't have been enough room to stitch and and still make a nice reveal around the outside. But doing the style more of a pancake style for just any type of holster, you have a lot of you have a lot of extra left over on the edge, so you just put the back back on it and then trim it over afterwards. Well, this style of holster here is stitched together and, and finished on the outside before it ever right. starts to be molded. But uh, but on like your phone case there, would you just put a, a flat piece on the back of it? Yes, put a flat piece on the back of it and uh, trim it up a little bit closer. So it, I, I would trim it. I would trim this up exact. This front piece. Exactly where you want your yeah, and then I would set this on top on top of this and cement it down and stitch it and then I would trim off the, the back part. Would you, did you hand stitch yours or is that machine? No, that's machine stitched. Yeah, I hand stitched that. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> From that far away. Hold it, down. <laughs> Hold it down there next to your scissors. <laughs> okay, it looks like a machine stitch. <laughs> <laughs> machine of Denny's hands. But you can hand stitch anything that you can machine stitch. In fact, you can hand stitch more than you can machine stitch. Yes. There are some things you just you can't, can't do, do it. Machine. Josie said overworking the leather from wet forming, you can just keep working and keep working it. Yeah, if you it out. if you make a mark like if I made a big ugly scar oh, yeah. out in the middle of this, I just you know, can you see that big ugly scar I just made with my <laughs> fingernail? Yeah. I don't know. But I can take this rub stick and just rub that out of there. Now, Denny, is there any, so, like some of these marks that you've, you've made along here whenever you're trying to work it in, are there any thing that you would attempt to avoid while you're while you're wet molding with these burnish marks and these? Well, yeah, sometimes sometimes you can get too excited and, and you know, make some marks that you aren't trying to make. Uh, but for the most part, when the leather's wet, if you've got a good smooth rub stick, you mm -hmm. can rub any of those marks out. Uh, a cut or a scra scrape or a scar, you can't get out of there. But you can still, like if I'd made a, I'll use your bare knife here. Yeah. If I'd made a cut right there, you can see that. Yep. Yeah. A little bit right there. Well. But I can take and, and rub over that where it's not nearly so noticeable. You know, and then now when I when I uh, take it, say that was my stitch line right there after I've stitched it, and then I trim this part off, you know, and I can burnish that. that edge, and you could hardly see mm -hmm. that. 
So one thing actually that I just thought about, is this a good surface? Is this the best surface to do your molding on or would you rather be working on a marble slab? Uh, a marble slab is probably the best because it's smooth when you turn when you turn your piece over. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any little imperfections here, it's gonna, especially gonna say, if you put a lot of pressure, it's gonna take uh, that impression itself. Yeah, that's one thing that I've always found is important. Once your leather is wet, it will take the impression of anything that is on the surface. So make sure that you have a really clean surface whenever you start your molding process. If you're using your marble, wipe it down first. Make sure you get all the little debris off because if you've got little pieces of leather that's been collecting, little leather dust or just anything on there, um, you'll flip your whatever it is back over and suddenly you'll have these little pock marks that now you have to work out as well. So just make sure that your surface is really clean because the leather is moldable at the moment. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what kind of wood makes a good rub stick? Uh, something that uh, doesn't, that the, the grain doesn't raise up when it's wet. Uh, and almost all wood will, uh, the grain will raise, but maple, hard maple is pretty good. Uh, I don't know where you could find any, but lignum vita, that's great because that's a tree. What was it? Lignum vita. Lignum vita. Yeah. Okay. It's a tree root that's mined underwater somewhere in the South Pacific, I think. Cool. But uh, I remember those old guys used to use lignum vita tools all the time. Just, it's really heavy. Yeah. Well, ironwood also is a really, really dense yeah. hardwood. What, what if you got like a, a driftwood that's already been in the water? Uh, it probably depends on what it is. You know, if it's very light, it's probably not going to yeah. be very good because it, it won't stay in shape. But a piece of walnut or something like that. Okay. So say you were going to make a phone case like you, you have there, Denny, and you tooled it before and you did your basket weaving. Would you do extra basket weaving just to make sure that you can, if you were going to do it all the way to the edge, just basket weave a little bit further past it so you can cut off the excess? No. No, because you really want a border no. yeah. around your tooling. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. want to tool all the way to the edge. Yeah, that's, and I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about anyone's work, but that's a, a sign of an amateur is when they when they just basket weave out to the edge of something. You know, you always like you want a border. It's like yeah. Liz said, you want a border around it, and that that gives you a definite start and stop place, and you don't want to stitch over your tooling. No, I mean, that that doesn't look good. It's not very professional. Typically, when you're basket weaving, I guess if we're just going to go down that road a little bit, you'll go out to to your border kind of edge that you've marked, and basket weaving is really uneven. Like depending on the shape or whatever you're doing, um, you know, there's a there's a lot of kind of end points that are awkward, and so typically when you've gotten pretty much to the edge of whatever your border is, then you're going to take some sort of like a camo tool and you're going to go all the way around your edge with that that yeah. camouflage tool and kind of blend in that's, your weird parts of your that's basket where a camouflage tool got its name. <laughs> it camouflages that raw edge yeah. of your tooling. Yeah. Yes. Um, antler, bone would also be good. Well, that's why we bone sell tooling. bone folders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Coming along there, Lynn. I, I think I think I'm gonna make Clayton airbrush this, and then next week we can give away a little a little leather bowl because it's it's gonna be super cute. I've been trimming up the edges. It's gonna. I like it. Cool. <laughs> cool. All right. Luna. All right. Okay. What other questions do we have? We'll see if any other questions pop up in there. Be careful with that bear skin and knife there, Denny. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to quite cut through a bear skin. <laughs> I do. It probably won't even cut through that bear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it won't even irritate the bear. <laughs> really make it through the hair. Oh, man. Anything else for but us, you, guys? You can... Oh. <clears throat> wet molding is... An experience. Something you've just got to try. Just do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're afraid to try it, you aren't ever going to get it done. So just get a piece of leather and get it wet and mold it around something. Yeah, for sure. Just so get the feel for what you're doing. Use veg tan. Mm -hmm. Don't use oil tan. And the biggest mistake that you can make is not make is not even trying. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, and if it's not working, just keep working at it. Yeah. Just like Liz. I mean, look what she's done. Oh, yeah, look at beautiful this. little bowl. Look at this cute little thing. <laughs> what do you want oh. to do next week, Denny? Next Wednesday. What do you want to do? Let's do it Friday. Next Friday. A week from Friday. Okay, Friday. I don't know. Oven hardening. <laughs> huh? Oven hardening. No. <laughs> I'm totally against it. <laughs> and he does not like oven hardening. I I just think I just think you ruin the leather when when you get it hot. 
And okay. when you cook it like that, because it was as soon as you bend it, it will check and crack. That's true. You know, uh, for like a wall hanging or something, that might be fine. Yeah. You know, but if it's going to be something that you use, you're going to bend it and it's going to crack there eventually. Yeah. So, Maybe guys, this immediate. was a suggestion that came through last week um, about molding and, and doing all this. So, if you guys have some thoughts or some things that you're interested in seeing besides oven hardening, um, apparently, <laughs> shoot us an email or don't have a place for it. send us. Yeah, send us a message and. Um, and we'll we'll see if we can maybe we can get rusty on this carl said his wife now flip-flops yeah oh, rusty's a flip-flop guy he, he did a rusty repair. loves making flip-flops he did a repair on flip-flops and i just haven't had a chance to edit the video he's made his own yeah he's made some of his own too juice box entertainment says is it stupid to wet mold exotics i mean they won't really basically impossible unless it's a crust a beaver you tail might, you might a beaver tail is vegetable tan yeah you might yeah and it i guess it depends so like if i'm doing one of my sheets that i've got a piece of exotic material inlaid in it i can still mold around it but typically the leather that i'm molding is still vegetable tanned that's actually being molded so i it depends on the application yeah. How about filigree on Friday? Filigree Friday. Okay. Filigree uh, uh, Friday. We will do a filigree. All right. Deal. Awesome. And then Clayton and I will see you this Friday, and we're going to finish up our duffel bag um, that we have a couple. We, I'm going to preemptive this. I left, a, I left a comment Yeah. on the video. We forgot a step that's very important. So we have to backtrack just slightly. Um, we'll get the handles on the bag because those are important before you make it into a circle. <laughs> Um, and then we'll continue with that. So we should be able to finish up that bag this week. It's just part of it. You know, everybody's going to make mistakes, but how do you go back and fix them? Exactly. It's also helpful. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, we did it on purpose. Luna's well, done. She wants out. Okay, guys. You, you can just roll that duffel bag. <laughs> That's what I told Clay. I was like, this is a hug, this is a hug bag. <laughs> just do that. All right. See you guys later. Bye. Thanks, folks. We do have something.